as we look at our table here. There we go. So we look at our table here. Um, there's four main tags that we need to worry about. There is table tag itself, all right, which defines table, all right. Uh, a table is a collection of rows, all right, and so within the table tag there will be a bunch of TR tags. TR stands for table rows. Each one of these represents a row. And then we have the end of the table. Table rows are uh, uh, contain table cells, and table cells are either TH tags or TD tags. TH is meant to represent a table header data. TD is meant to represent um, table data. All right, so just regular normal cell data, so headers and data. And those are the basic table tags. Typically. You're going to have the same number of cells per row. That's what gives it the table look. There are some advanced things that you can do, such as using the call span attribute that allows you to span a couple of columns, or row span allows you to span a couple of rows. But those things, a lot of times, um, you can avoid doing them. A lot of times, a lot of the sort of the odd things with tables sprung out of the result of having tables that were used for layout. When you had tables that were used for layout, you would kind of like merge rows together to come up with um, like a banner or a navigation section. But if you're strictly using tables for which they were intended, for the purpose for which they were intended, that is to represent a table of data, these are kind of the things that, um, that you need. Um, we talked about styling, and again, Styling tables is really no different, for the most part, than styling anything else. You can apply uh, relative or, attribu or uh, absolute attributes to the sizes, for example. All right? You can give, uh, for example, in this case I made the table have a width of 80%. Um, one unique thing about tables is the border collapse. But beyond that, then, we can apply styles to different tags within the table, so THs and TDs, or we can apply to different classes as we did to achieve that alternating row effect. So that we have a table appear sort of with the uh, yellow bars so that we can, our eyes don't move as we go across. If you notice, as we resize this, The table resizes because we've declared it as a relative size, um, but it won't cut content off. So at a certain point, it stops resizing it. Remember that when we give something a size, that we're sizing it within a container. So for example, I gave the, t uh, the table an overall width of 80%. Now, because the table exists as part of the body, and it's not contained within anything else, that 80% represents 80% of the whole page. All right? So the table isn't nested within any kind of element. All right? So therefore... When I say the table width is 80%, that's 80% of the entire page. All right. Whereas if we look at the THs, I've given them a width of 25%. That relates to 25% of its container. And the THs container is the TR, and the TR's container is the table. So that 25% isn't 25% of the whole screen, but it's 25% of the table's width. All right? Um, 
as opposed to 20% or 25% of the whole screen. Another thing we can do to sort of demonstrate that is I'll put the table inside an article. So if I go and put an article tag here and here, if I go and give the article a width, say, of 60%, be a pretty narrow table because that article takes up 60% of the page, so it would be about here. The table takes up 80% of that, so you're talking around 48%. Let's go and put a, a, a background color on the, uh, artic on the article. So there you can see that 60% of the screen, the table is 80% of that. Within the constraints, again, it won't cut off anything. Questions about this and what we've used this so far? Now, avoid the temptation to make tables um, complicated. All right, tables are best meant to represent a single table of data. That's true both from a coding perspective and from an accessibility perspective. And we'll talk about accessibility in a minute here. All right. But you can actually do things like you can nest tables inside of tables. All right. Um, an example of that might be inside the Cleveland cell for January maybe would have a table that wouldn't just show temperature, but would show temperature and snow and rainfall and other weather attributes. That would be really confusing to read. All right? It would be really confusing to code. You better have that coding perfect, otherwise you're going to run into, into problems. And it also poses a, a nightmare for accessibility. All right? So try to keep it simple. The other thing to do would not be to make one table contain two things. So, for example, let's say I also wanted to show average precipitation here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to cut some of these rows off just so that we don't have quite as much data. Let's say I wanted to show in addition to the average temperature, I'd want to show um, precipitation. You might be tempted to do this. Well, hey, I got one big table. Well, let's put the precipitation in there, too. And then... I'm not going to change the numbers. We'll just assume that it gets the same rainfall as the temperature. Probably a good assumption. All right. You might say, okay, I have one table that contains both those things. That's generally not good from an accessibility viewpoint. It's best, and it's not good really from a semantic viewpoint or a theoretical viewpoint, because a table should show one thing. All right. So the better way to do this would be to have two tables. So if I was going to do this, I would, in the one table, and begin the next table. So I'd break that one complicated down, one complicated table down into two smaller tables. Notice visually it doesn't look any different. All right, but logically it makes more sense because that really wasn't one table of data. That was two tables of data 
disguised as one table. All right? You're lying to your browser. Don't lie to your browser. What, what, the, what the data is meant to be is what it, it, what it ought to be. All right? Now, there's a few other tags that we can use associated with tables. I'm going to get rid of this background color here now that it served its purpose. And these I can never quite remember, so I'm going to look them up. All right, first thing we can do is we can put a caption on the table. Keep in mind the manner in which people access the web and the difference between someone that is actually viewing the page versus someone that's hearing the page being narrated. All right. People visually can sort of put things in context very quickly. In other words, I'm going to get rid of the second table for now. For example, someone that can see will look at that and instantly will say, could give a reasonable description of what the table is. They could say, well, you know, that's showing for the first quarter of the year, average temperature for selected U.S. cities. All right? Might not word it exactly like that, but pretty obvious. Why? Because your eyes sort of take everything in, and your brain sort of gives a context to it. Oh, that's what this is, right? Keep in mind now someone is going to be accessing this if they're having a screen reader read it. It's going to read one thing at a time, and therefore it's going to be difficult for them to get the whole picture, all right, simply by having the columns read piecemeal, all right. We see everything all at once, so therefore we can put it in context pretty quickly, intuitively even, all right. We don't even really think about what that represents. But if this table was being read to you one thing at a time, it might be difficult for you to tell that. That's where the caption comes in. A caption. And it appears right after the table tag. A caption allows us to put in a description of what the table represents. there. It shows that. That's nice for people that can see, right? Because just in case it was a little confusing, that sort of lays it on the line and tells you what, what, uh, uh, what that table's about. But for people that are visually impaired, it's valuable because the screen reader can read that to them and they instantly get the context that people that can see get more or less intuitively. Now, like everything else, this can be styled. So if we don't want it to look like that, we can style it. So we could go in and we could make the caption, put a style on the caption to make the, let's make the um, color blue and the font size. 1.5 am and the font family Verdana L font serif well 
that shows us that. All right? So that's one thing that we can do for accessibility. Another thing that we can do is we can group table rows together into table head area, table body, and table foot areas. Now, the headings of the table, again, this is an, just an alternate way to do it. It will help someone access it. You can wrap a T-head table around that. I suppose in some cases it is possible to have two rows of headers. And by putting the T-head tag in, you identify which rows constitute your headers. Likewise, there's a table body. And a footer would be used for kind of summary information or like totals. Let's say, for example, we had maybe an average for all three of these selected cities. You know, so we showed, we showed the average for each individual city. Then we can show, and I'm going to have to look that one up to see if it's T-footer or T-foot. And I can go in and maybe say average for selected cities. All right. This also provides me some styling options, right? Because if I would want to put the footers in a different manner, I could style the T foot tag now. Remember, any HTML tag that you use gives you a hook to style in. Now remember, you can style things a bunch of different ways, right? You could style things, well, let me, sh well, you can style things by class, by ID, and by HTML tag. But you don't want to micromanage your style sheets. You don't want to do too much work, all right? Too much work is bad, all right? And it's not just because I'm lazy. Notice I didn't say I'm not lazy. I said that's not the only reason why it's not a good idea. All right? It's not a good idea because the more work you do, the more work it will take to change it if you decide to change it. That's the real problem. So let's think about two ways that we could style this. All right? If I was styling a table, I could do this. You can almost always tell when I'm about to talk about a bad idea, because I'm going to say I could do this, right? If it was a good idea, I'd just do it. I wouldn't say I could do it. I could do this. I could put a table, and I could put a TR, ID equals headers. TD, ID equals head header, or header one, then have my header. And that would be my row of headers. Then I could have TR
maybe a class of data and have TD my data. And then at the end, I could have a TR ID equals foot. And then I could apply a style to each of those classes and IDs and so on. All right? You could do that. The problem with that is there's already tags built that say that this is the header section of your table, that this is a header cell, that this is a data cell, that this is a footer row. All right? Use those tags. All right? Your goal shouldn't be just to get a particular desired result. Your goal should be to do it and do it in a way that's efficient and maintainable. All right? And oftentimes that involves coming up with the simplest solution possible. All right? And therefore, it would be much better instead, instead of doing that convoluted scheme I had, to just use the T head tag, the T body tag, and the T foot tag. That's what those tags are there for, to tell the browser that that's what that represents. I don't have to make up classes and IDs for that. All right? So, use the HTML to describe the tags based on what they mean and use the, the most appropriate HTML tag, all right, um, for the job. So, for example, if you have a header in a column, use a TH tag. Don't use a TD tag. If you use a TD tag and put a header in it, you're lying to the browser and don't lie to the browser. Even if you make it look the way that a header should, it doesn't matter. You've gotten maybe the desired outcome, but you haven't done it in a very clean, maintainable way. All right? So use the tags for which they were intended. And again, in addition to the basic tags, you have available the T foot, the T body, and the T head. You can use that. Those have the benefit both for accessibility and they provide an alternate way of styling. So, in this case, what I could do is I could say T foot. Maybe I'll put a different background on it. A background of real pale green. And now we have that. And we haven't lied to our browser. You haven't, yeah, it's a, you can't see it, but yeah. And all I did is I went in to the HTML and I put a style rule for T foot. That's a lot better than going in and putting some bogus class on this and say class footer. There's already a tag to designate this as a footer, so use it. Mm -hmm. So let's say we wanted to put a border around the whole table is the question. I could do this. Border. We'll make it wide. Five pixel red dotted. Yeah. I do these things for examples. I'm amazed when I actually I'm amazed when I actually go and visit websites that like look like they did this. It's like I hope someone isn't watching my video and thinking this is like I'm intending these to be good design. And there we go. Yeah, lovely. I know, look at how weird it is. It looks like you're writing more code. Why is it doing that? That's a good question. Because I've done the border collapse, collapse, and and the 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 border hasn't figured out to put spaces there. If I take the border collapse out, I'll bet you it will look the way that you'd expect it to. That was a little surprise for me as well. So if I take out the border collapse, there it looks more like the dot except for this one, which is really three dots, you know, but all together, yeah.
to make it go somewhere. Yeah, like, okay, say if I want to click so if I clicked on, on he, he, like okay, so if I if I clicked on St. Louis, it takes me to St. Louis. How do you well, how do you think you do that? It just it was just with a link, yeah. We could, for example, not saying that this is good design, we could put the whole table in a link tag. A href equals http Google exactly dot com. Well, no, because we overrode the board. And now, you go and click it. Yeah. And, of course, if we wanted to do something where, like, maybe make each city a link to a certain page, we could then just put that text in a link. All right? Yeah, inside the TDs. All right. Um, let's see. What else? There's a couple more things about making accessible. Uh, in addition to the caption, there is a there is the details of the table. That we can put in. I'm just going to copy and paste this. That's why you had help there. Oh, the magic of HTML5. All right. So we got this little help thing. We click on it. We get a complete description of the table. So if there was more detail, if you wanted to say maybe why you picked those three cities. I picked these cities because I... These are the three teams that I expect to be in the football playoffs that time of the year or whatever. I don't know. I guess they don't have too many playoff games in March, but you get the idea. Um, I'm considering running marathons in these three cities, and I want to know what the temperature is going to be in them. All right? So you could put a more complete description. So you have a caption. You have a little summary here and that serves sort of as like a little link that you can go and click on that. Now here's a million dollar question. What do you think the million dollar question is? How does this look in IE prior to IE7? Or prior to IE9 rather. Pardon me? Yeah. Alright. You don't get the you don't get the fancy functionality there, all right? But it works, all right? This is known as um, graceful degradation, all right? In other words, as you go to an older platform, the functionality degrades. That is, it doesn't do as good as it does, you know, uh, as it does on a higher end browser or a more recent browser. But it does so in a way that it doesn't break things. All right? And if you have that going on, you're, you're typically okay. So remember, you know, how do I want to say it? Developing web pages often involves a bit of compromise, right? You may have a vision in your head of exactly how you want it to work and exactly how you want it to behave. However, there's so many constraints in the world, like the platform someone's running on and the browser that they're running on and so on and so forth, that you can't necessarily achieve your vision 100%. I may want my page always to look like this and be able to do that. 
But you know what? Ain't going to happen because there's some people in the world that have earlier versions of the browser, such as this one. trying to put the caption on one line, whereas this one puts a caption. Yeah. All right. Ouch. All right. The point is, though, is I would not look at this and say, IE doesn't support those features, so I'll take them out. All right. IE doesn't support those features, to be sure, but you know what? It doesn't look horribly you know, done in this manner. So I'll leave them in. And that way, as people migrate to browsers that have better HTML5 support, people will get that. You know? I won't diminish the experience of people that are using more recent browsers simply because there's people that have older browsers. I will, however, make sure to as great a degree as I can that it doesn't blow up for people. That, that have older browsers. And that, in a nutshell, is sort of what, what is meant by graceful degradation. It's not going to work as well. The, the performance or the, the experience is degraded slightly, but it, it's done in a graceful way. All right? It doesn't do it in an ugly way, like blowing up or not showing the table at all or anything that, that could have really bad consequences. Questions? Which part? The, the yeah. And let me do a better job in denning that. Oops. The summary is what becomes that little link. All right. And by clicking on it, you can show and hide the rest of the text in there. Uh, it's funny, and, and being as a, as, a, as a teacher and someone that teaches a variety of topics, um, there's a handful of themes that pop up regardless of what context of IT you're working in. You know, of, for example, I said don't lie to your browser. Funny uh, enough, in my database class I say don't lie to your database. All right? And I mean the same thing. In other words, if you have a customer number field on your database, make sure it means customer number all the time. Not sometimes it means, well, that's not really a customer. That's an order that we ship to another department. In our no, you don't do that. All right? You keep one field meaning one thing. You don't lie to your database and have that. So many old applications did that. People got into so much trouble trying to be clever. All right? And they thought, it's like, oh, I'll... I'll be smart. I'll save a couple of bytes and I'll do this. I'll save a couple of bytes and do that. And of course, that was the whole Y2K thing, right? People being clever. Now, you can't blame those folks at the time because at the time, you know, uh, they're, they're, yeah, I was going to say at the time, memory was so scarce that my cell phone probably has as much memory as five computers back then. But, so you can't really blame them. But again, you know, now that hardware constraints are less of an issue, you want to you wanna do things by the book. You don't want to try anything tricky to get, you know, to, to achieve some, think you're going to get a slight little edge, you know, because you won't, you know, it'll, it'll come back to bite you every time. It's just a matter, a matter of when it will <laughs> come back to bite you. Another thing related to, access, uh, to accessibility of tables relate to headers, all right, using headers and IDs. And 
Remind me, I will post this link. Remind me in 10 minutes when, when the class finishes, I'll post this link because this looks like a good page. All right. Now, let's, uh, again, let's imagine us reading, seeing the table versus someone who's visually impaired having the table narrated to them. For us, you know, what is this number? 50, all right? And what does it represent? March temperature for Houston, all right? How do you know that? Your eyes instantly, without even thinking about it, your eyes go up and across, whoops, up and across, and say, okay, that relates to Houston, that relates to March's temperature, all right? Or specifically, it relates to March's temperature, all right? Now, imagine if it was narrated to you, you know, and it was something like Cleveland, 10, 20, 30, St. Louis, 20, 30, 40. Maybe with three numbers, it wouldn't be so bad, but if we gave all 12 months worth of data, it would be like 56. Well, wait a minute, was that May or June? You know, it would be real hard to keep track of. People that can see instantly visually make that association by looking up and, and looking across. What you can do, though, for people that can't see it is you can provide hints. And you can provide hints this way through the use of IDs and headers. So, I'll do this. I'll put ID equals March. ID equals Feb. ID equals Jan. ID equals Cleveland. All right. These three cells, along with this cell, are sort of the headers that point to what those data cells mean. So, what I will do is I'll go in and I'll say headers equal Jan Klee. Now, the screen reader software knows where to get the header for this cell if it needs to. And again, depending on exactly the kind of screen reader and how it's implemented, if the screen reader is narrating and telling a number, you can, as you're moving through the table, as you're navigating through the table, there will be a way, there'll be a hook in here for the screen reader to go and be able to narrate and read what the headers are for that cell. So in other words, this number 50, what is that? Well, the headers for this are Mar and Hugh. Well, Hugh ties to this. Oh, okay. Houston. Mar ties to this, which is March temperature. All right. 
So by defining those headers, we can associate a column, or, or not a column, a, a cell, with the header of the column and the header of the row. We can give enough information to identify what that number means. It, it would, uh, again, it would, it would vary with the particular screen reading software that you're talking about, all right? So, but um, it, it ought to be reading the, the full name. So it should, ought to be reading the, contact, the, the content of that cell and not the ID. The content of the cell that has ID. So it should read January Houston, all right? Reading the IDs really doesn't do anything for you necessarily. Um, the ID is just meant to point to that cell where the screen reader can get the full description if it needs it. You shouldn't have to, right. That, that's right. You can use, as long as that matches up with the column that you named here. Yeah, you could be quick. You could just make it J or whatever. Yeah, you know, if you wanted to be terse about it. Now, one thing about this is that... Um, I want to make a couple points about this. First of all, this goes beyond the notion of accessibility being just putting all the attributes on images, right? This is something, again, that um, isn't quite as apparent that someone who is visually impaired is going to have an issue with this, right? It's obvious that someone that's visually impaired that's accessing a web page via a screen reader isn't going to be able to see the images. So, you, so okay, put an alternate description there. That makes sense. It's probably not so obvious to people, until you think about it, how accessing a table on a page, it could be problematic too, especially if you're talking about a table with a lot of rows, a lot of columns. All right? And therefore, this goes beyond that. Now, one of the charges that people make about accessible websites is that they, they take extra cost to do. Well, it depends, right? It depends on whether you develop your, entitle, your, your entire site without giving any thought to accessibility and then have to go back later and retrofit your site as opposed to if you've designed it to be accessible from the ground up, all right? Um, you know, new buildings that are created have things such as wheelchair ramps and elevators and braille. If you ever gone like to an old building that they've tried to retrofit for those accommodations, you know, that gets to be a problem. I know one old building has actually a chair. I've seen an old building. I never saw one of these in real life. I only saw them on movies where they actually have a chair that is on the railing of a staircase that a person that, that can't walk will sit in and mechanically it pulls them up there. And something like that has to be very expensive because it's sort of like, added on as an afterthought, all right? It's sort of like if you're building a house and you plan on it having, you know, 10 rooms, and then you change it for 12 rooms, that will add some expense. But if you've already built a 10-room house and you decide to add two extra rooms, the expense is going to go a lot higher. So, yeah, this does require a little bit of extra effort to do these things, all right? But if it's sort of baked in from the ground up, that effort is small compared to, you know, later on down the line realizing that you need to do it and encountering all sorts of uh, expense. All right, so, yeah, it does require a little more expense, but again, you, um, you know, it's something that um, won't be as, as big of a deal if you do it later on. Uh, as compared to if you did it later on. If you did it later on, it would be a much bigger deal, much more expensive. One thing to keep in mind as well is we've touched on server-side scripting in this class. Some of these things like this appears to be very tedious to code. Um, in larger applications, this table, you wouldn't necessarily hand code the HTML. You'd write a script to write this HTML, and as such, it's not like you would, you, you, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd include that in the program. So it almost doesn't matter if you're generating five rows or 500 rows. You write the same code no matter what, and it just figures out how many rows it needs to generate. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
this is one of those, this is an example uh, of an accessibility thing that really has no impact on the appearance of it. You know, it's like the, the braille on the, on the door, you know. Unless I went and did a view source, I wouldn't see that anything has changed on this. It would be, you know, there are a handful of extra bytes associated with this page, so it is slightly bigger, but that, you know, we, we've, we haven't even really added enough uh, characters where you, you could make the argument, well, it's going to be a slower download. Yeah, you know, what are you going to do in that millisecond of extra time that, we, <laughs> you know, really not, not anything substantial. All right, next week we have two topics to cover. And we'll see how it goes. Um, on Monday of next week, we'll talk about as much of those two topics as I can. All right? It might be everything. It might not be everything. Probably won't be everything. On Wednesday, we will polish up those topics. And I would also like Wednesday to be partly a working day where you bring your stuff to class, for your, especially for your final project, but for any of your labs. And a sharing day where you go and you show folks in the class the stuff that you've done. You know, I've seen the, the designs and I've seen the prototypes and, and people in this class generally do some great work. And people this semester are no different than, than anyone else. So get inspired by what your classmates are doing you know, and, and, and see all the great work that they've done. If you are in the online section of the class, you're welcome to sit in as, as always. You're also welcome to share portions of your site on the bulletin board uh, or the forum, even if you just take screenshots and display them just to show what you've done. All right, it's a good way to share uh, the stuff. All right, okay, we'll see you up in lab.